Hi everyone, I'm Sharika Hapwarachi. I have more than 20 years experience in teaching mathematics for primary and secondary students. This is my YouTube channel, Math Plus. Today, I'm going to discuss the Cambridge Primary Checkpoint Mathematics, uh, some past paper questions, right? So I'm going to discuss 10 past paper questions. Let's move to the first slide. Right, this is the first question. Here is a sequence of numbers. What is the next number in the sequence? Actually, when you get a question like this, you will get one mark. This is how they indicate the mark, right? Now, you have to find the next number. To find the next number, you have to identify this pattern. Let me check that. My first number is 705. Then my second number is 805. Then my third number is 905. I can see when you add 100 to the previous number, I will get my next number. That means 705 plus 100. I'm getting 805. Then 805 plus 100. I'm getting 905. Then to find the next number, the similar pattern, I have to continue. That means I have to add another 100 to this 905. So 905 plus 100, I will get 1005. So that is how I will get the answer for this first question, right? So I have to add 100, then I can get my next number. So according to the question, they ask us to find the next number. So our next number is 1005. So if you do like this way, you will get one mark for this question, right? Okay, let's move to the second question. Question number two, here are some signs. Now they have given three signs. The first one is the equal sign. Now you know these two signs, we consider the greater and the less sign, right? Write the correct sign in each box. You can use each sign more than once. That means the same sign you can use in two, three places, right? To find this, the first thing you have to do, you multiply these and find your value. Then it's much more easier for you to identify the sign, right? Four times four, it's 16. So I'm going to write 16. Then two times eight, it's 16. So then 16 and 16, both sides are similar. Therefore, I can use the equal sign, right? The second one, 8 times 7, you start the 8 times table, count up to 7 numbers. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, and 56. So my answer is 56. Then similar way, you do the 9 times 6 also. 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, and 54. Now, by looking, I can say, I can see 56 is larger than 54. Therefore, I have to use this side. Next one, 3 times 8, it's 24. And 5 times 5, it's 25. So 25 is larger than 24. So therefore, you have to use this side, right? Next one, 6 times 4, it's 24. And four times six also 24. So you can use the equal sign. So for this question, for this question number two, if you get the correct four signs, you will get two marks, right? So that is how we should do it. So make sure if you get a question like this, first you multiply and get your value. After that, you try to use the correct sign, right? Let's move to the next slide. Third question. This is my third question. Right. Here is, 
Here is part of a number grid. Circle the number that is a multiple of seven. In other words, a multiple of seven means in the table of seven, right? Now we have to identify out of these nine numbers, what are the numbers are in the seven times table, but they say circle the number. So therefore we will get only one number, right? We'll start counting the seven times table, seven, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49. Now I can see 49 is here. So it's in the seven times table and seven times seven, it's 49. So 49 is the correct answer and you will get one mark for this. Right, let's move to the other question. Question number four, write the missing number. So when you get a question like that, what you have to do, you have to identify the question clearly. 0 0.85 plus what makes one? So that means from one, you have to take away 0 0.85, right? I will write it correctly. We can write 1.00 minus 0 0.85. Make sure you write the decimal point in the correct place. So it should be one under the other, right? Now I'm going to subtract, right? Now I, when I'm going to subtract, I have to borrow and subtract. I'm going to take one from here. Then I'm going to take one from here. Then this will become 10. This will become nine and this will become zero, right? Okay, 10 minus five, it's five. Nine minus eight, it's one. And you don't get any value here, it's zero. So according to this question, 0 0.85 plus 0 0.15, you will get one. So that is how we find the answer, right? Let's move to the fifth question, right? My fifth question, my fifth question, here is a rectangle. It is twice as long as it's wide. So remember those bold words you identify clearly. Twice means two times. So now according to this, uh, figure according to this shape they have given the width as seven centimeters then i can identify my length should be seven times two that means it's 14 centimeters so first you have to find that part after that the question is what is the perimeter of the rectangle we know how do we find the perimeter? By adding all the four sides. So if this side is seven centimeters, this side also seven centimeters. And if this is 14, this side also will get as 14. Now, when I'm going to find the perimeter, perimeter means you have to add all the four sides. 14 plus 14, it's 28. Then again, seven plus seven, it's 14. So then what should I do? I have to add 14 centimeters plus 14 centimeters plus seven plus seven, right? So when you add, you will get the perimeter. So my two lengths I have taken and I have taken my two widths, right? So that is how we find the perimeter. Okay, so you have to add these four to get your perimeter. So you will get the unit with centimeters. Seven plus seven, 14. 14 plus four, it's 18. 18 plus four, it's 22. Write two and leave two, two, three, four. So your answer is 42 centimeters. So according to this rectangle, the perimeter is 42 centimeters. Right, let's move to the next question. Okay, 
that's our sixth question this is this was our fifth question now we'll go to the sixth question right according to the sixth question they have given ab is a straight line calculate the size of angle x do not use a protractor angle measure that means we know now they say a b is a straight line we know the theory angles of a straight line or angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees we know this angle is 35 degrees and this angle is 20 degrees so we have to find this missing angle that is x angle so what you should do first you have to write an equation now i will write my equation 35 degrees plus x plus 20 degrees my answer should be comes up to 180 degrees right because we know angles on a straight line add up to 180 then i have to add 35 plus 20 which is 55 then to find the value of x, I have to take away 55 from 180, right? So that is how you should do. So then 35 plus 20, we got as 55. Now I'm going to subtract. Here even you have to borrow and subtract. So this will become, now when you take, this will become 10. And this 8 will become 7 now then 10 minus 5 it's 5 7 minus 5 it's 2 and 1 so what is the value of x i'm getting 125 degrees right so remember first you have to use the theory and according to that you can find the value for the missing letter right okay let's move to the question number seven Okay, the question number seven, we'll take another color. Right. The A part, write this mixed number as an improper fraction. So we call this is a mixed number. We know how do we change a mixed number to the improper fraction. First, you have to multiply the denominator and this whole number. And then you have to add the numerator. So similar method I'm going to use. 4 times 5, you have to multiply. 4 times 5, it's 20. And you have to add 3. So 20 plus 3, it's 23. And make sure you write the same denominator. I will explain it again. 4 times 5, it's 20. 20 plus 3, it's 23. And you write the same denominator. Write this improper fraction as a mixed number. 17 over 5. So what you should do, you divide this numerator by the denominator, right? So that is what I'm going to do. Inside 17, I have to see how many 5s. 5, 10, 15. So there are three 5s. 5 times 3, which is 15. 17 minus 15, 2 remains. So when I'm going to write it as a mixed number, this is my whole number, so it's 3, and you make sure you can't change your denominator. You have to keep the same denominator. So I have my denominator as 5, and my remainder is 2. You can check whether your answer is correct by multiplying and see whether you are getting 17 over 5. Let me check that. 5 times 3, 15, 15 plus 2, 17. Years I'm getting 17 as the numerator and the denominator as 5, right? So that is how we convert mixed numbers to improper fractions and improper fractions to the mixed numbers, right? Now let's move to the question number 8. Okay, question number 8. Here is a sequence of numbers. Write the missing number in each box, right? Now, by looking even, you can identify these are square numbers, right? What is this 81 means? 9 squared, 9 into 9. You're getting 81. What is 64 means? 8 squared, 8 into 8, right? 
we don't know our missing number i'll just leave it then my next one it's six squared six into six you're getting 36 then 25 means it's five squared five into five again i'm leaving my missing number now you can see nine means it's three squared now you can identify the pattern correctly nine eight then this should be seven right so it should be seven squared so we know what is seven squared seven times seven it should be 49 similar way you can identify the other thing nine eight seven six five so this should be four squared so what is four squared four times four it's 16 right for this question you will get eight marks right so first you study the pattern after that you have to identify the pattern and then you find the missing values right the ninth question what is seven tenths of 650 we know what's the meaning of of means multiplication or the product so first i'm going to write like this seven out of ten of means multiplication 650 we know numerators and the denominators you can simplify if you have the common multiple so i can cut one zero to one zero so down i'll get only one therefore i can multiply 65 times seven right let me multiply 65 times seven Seven times five, it's 35. We can write five and leave three. Seven times six, yes. Seven, 14, 21, 28, 35, and 42. And you have to add these three. So 42 plus three, it's 45. So then according to this question, my answer is, 455 so what is seven tenths of 650 it's 455 right so that is how we find the answer let's move to our final question question number 10 right this is the question number 10 join each calculation to the correct box now they have given odd and even we know odd numbers are ending with one three five seven and nine right and the even numbers are ending with zero two four six and eight now when you're going to do this question you don't want to multiply the whole thing by looking at the last two digits you can identify so 64 times 10 means it's 640 so 640 means my last digit 640 so my last digit is zero so therefore this is an even value okay here even i'm just multiplying the last two so seven times four it's 28 eight means it's an even number seven times three it's 21 21 means one it's an odd number four times three it's 12 12 means my last digit is two therefore it is an even number so that is how we identify you don't want to multiply the whole thing don't waste your time to multiply the whole thing just you multiply the last two digits and identify the last digit with that you can see whether it's an odd number or an even number right okay these are the 10 questions if you have gained something from this video please subscribe and share with your friends and we'll meet next time thank you for watching